Hi, I'm Minda Tracy from my online training hub. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at Power Query's Unpivot and Pivot tools. One of the most common data layout problems we Excel users encounter is data that is already in a pivoted or partially pivoted layout. And these formats are bad because we can't use pivot tables or formulas the way they were designed. And so we end up agonizing over ridiculously complicated formulas in an attempt to work with that poor layout. But now that we've got Power Query, we don't have to put up with poorly laid out data anymore because it's really easy to fix. So I'm going to show you how we can use Power Query's Unpivot and Pivot tools to convert some common data layouts into the correct tabular format so you can work with Excel pivot tables and formulas the way they were intended. You'll be Power Query Unpivot Masters by the end. By the way, don't worry about taking notes because I've provided step-by-step -step instructions in my file which you can download. So the first data we're going to look at is this table of salesperson data and we can see we've got it partially pivoted because we've got a separate column for each year and we've also got this grand total information. Now this is our source data so we shouldn't really have any totals in it at all and we really need a single column for the year and then a single column for the amount. This is formatted in an Excel table so it's really easy for Power Query to grab it. Now I'm in Excel 2016 so I'm going to go to the data tab, which is where my Power Query tools are in the get and transform group. If you're using Excel 2010 or 2013, then you'll have a separate tab for Power Query and you'll be able to load your data into Power Query from there. I'm going to go from table or range. That's because my data is in a table. So we'll click that. Power Query is going to grab the data and it opens the Power Query editor window. Now let me just drag it across into view. Okay, so this is my Power Query window. You can see it's separate to the Excel window. And while this is open, I can't actually click into Excel. So we're working in Power Query. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the column that I don't need, the grand total column. So I'm just going to click on the column to select it and press delete looks very much like Excel. We've got a ribbon and a grid, and this is our data that we can see from our table. Now, as I work with the data that I see here, it's not affecting the source data. It's taken a copy of the data for me, and I'm just altering that copy. So now what we want to do is unpivot these columns. We can do that by selecting them, and then on the Transform tab, if I make the screen a bit wider, it might show me the actual name. So unpivot is up here. If you have a bigger screen, then you'll have unpivot beside this icon. I need to click on it to reveal my options. So I can unpivot the selector columns or unpivot other columns or unpivot only selected columns. I tend to always use unpivot columns or unpivot other columns. Just future proofs my data. So if I were to get another year added to this, I can choose unpivot columns and then when I refresh, it will include that other year in my data set and I'll show you that in a moment. So we're unpivoting the columns with values in. That's typically what you want to do when you unpivot. You're unpivoting the value columns as opposed to columns that contain text. So unpivot. Now we've got a column for our year so we can rename that. Just double click on the column header to rename and we'll call this sales. So now our data is in a tabular format. I'm just going to change the type of this column. So at the moment it thinks it's text, but it's actually a whole number because that's our year. So we'll change the data type. And you'll notice over here, Power Query has recorded the steps that I've gone through to get to this view of the data. And now I'm ready, I can close and load it. So I'm going to give this query a name. Call it clean sales data. Now I can close and load and that will put it to my default load location, which in my case is just a table in Excel, or I can choose close and load too, and I get a few more options. Let's have a look at those. So let's bring the dialog box up into view a bit better. So these are my options. I've got load it into a table, go straight into a pivot table report or a pivot chart, or only create a connection. And there are some occasions where that's really useful. 
I can put it in an existing worksheet or I can add it to the data model. I'm going to put it in an existing worksheet and I'm just going to select a cell beside this table. Actually, I'll give it a bit of space. So I'll pop it in there and I'll click OK. And Power Query is lo going to load the data in and you can see the query pane opens up over here and I can see this is my query and this is my separate set of data that's linked to this source data. This is in a proper tabular format so I can now go ahead and create pivot tables and reference it in formulas. But what happens when we finally get the new data for 2016? Let's just put some dummy data in here or we'll just add a value to that. Now if I want to update this table all I need to do is right click and refresh and now my 2016 data is also included. I haven't had to go through all those steps again. It just updates for me on a simple refresh and anything that I have linked to this table will also be updated. So that's a fairly straightforward unpivot. Let's have a look at a more complicated one. I'll close the query pane. So in this case, I have data that's sort of partially tabular. This part's really in the right format, but then I have these columns across here and it's all gone a bit pear shaped. So I've got actual hours for Jan and Feb and then actual costs for Jan and Feb. And really what I need is a column for the month name, a column for the hours and a column for the costs. Again, this is formatted in an Excel table, so it's nice and easy for Power Query to get it. So again, data from table or range. And if you have Excel 2010 or 2013, then it would be you would go to the Power Query tab as opposed to the data tab. So I've got the preview of my data and I need to unpivot again the values column. So I'm going to select the values columns and then transform, unpivot. So now I have a column for my attribute and a column for my values. But the problem I have is I've got hours and costs in the same column and I really need them separate. But I also need to separate the month from the type of cost or hours, the attribute itself. So if I select this column, let's split the month out. So we can use the, again on the transform tab, we can split the column. Now we can choose from delimiter or number of characters. I'm going to go with number of characters because my month labels are all just three characters long. And I'm going to do it, split it once as far left as possible and I'll click OK. Now we have a space preceding this attribute field. So I need to clean that. Let's go and trim the space out. And now I have my values. I still need to get them into their own columns. So this is where we can actually pivot the data. So we can pivot the attribute column, pivot. Where are the values? It's asking me. Well, the values are in the column called values in this particular case. In my advanced options, I can change the aggregation type. Sum is fine for this purpose. And I'll click OK. So now I have a column for my month. Let's rename that. A column for my hours and a column for my costs. And now I have the perfect tabular format. Let's go and close and load it too. And I'll put it on an existing worksheet. I'm just going to pop it underneath this data. Now, when you're doing this, don't ever put it on the same sheet because eventually you're likely to come into a clash where this table tries to overwrite that table. But we can see here for the purpose of just learning the correct format our data is now in. And again, we haven't changed the source. We have just created a new view of the data. OK, let's look at a different scenario. This is a really common problem, probably one of the worst things we Excel users can do. And that is where we put header rows over two rows when really we should only ever have headers in one row. So we need to merge these two rows together and then we need to unpivot these so that they're in one column for hours and one column for costs. And you'll notice this data is almost exactly the same as this data in here. It's just we've got these nested header rows. The other thing to notice here is this data isn't in a table yet. So let's format it in a table. Control T is the shortcut. Now in this case, I need to deselect my table has headers 
because the headers aren't in the right place. They aren't in one row. So I can't use either of those rows as headers. I'm going to click OK. Excel goes and puts in a new default header row for me. And then I have my actual headers in the first two rows of the table. So let's go ahead and load this into Power Query from a table. Now in order to get the headers into one row, we need to transpose the data because in Power Query we can merge two columns, but we can't merge two rows. So let's go ahead and transpose the data on the Transform tab, Transpose. So now we have our header rows in the column one and column two. So we need to join them together. But before we do that, we need to copy down January into the row below and February into the row below as well. So we'll select column one and we'll fill down. Now we've got Jan and Feb on each row that they relate to. We can select column one and two and we just hold down shift to select two columns, just like in Excel. And then up on the transform tab, we're going to merge columns. It'll ask us if we want to put a separator in. And it's a good idea at this point to choose a separator that's not present in any of your data, because if you want to separate this information out again later, then you'll want to have something unique. Now I'm actually going to break that rule and choose space because as you'll notice before, when we split the column, we chose to split by a set number of characters and I'm going to do the same again because Jan and Feb are three characters. So it doesn't really matter if my separator is repeated in the data. The new column name, I'm going to leave it at merged. It doesn't really matter because I'm not going to keep it. So I'll click OK. So now we have our column headers in one column at the moment. We need to transpose it back. But before I do that, I'm just going to trim that extra space out of the front there. So we're going to format and trim. Now we can transpose and now we have all of our headers in one row. We can actually promote that to the header row now. Use first row as headers. Now we've got our headers in the first row and you'll notice our data is back to the previous example where we have separate columns for hours for January and hours for February and actuals for January and actuals for February. So we need to unpivot the data. You'll know, see now that unpivot columns icon has enough room to display completely. So I'll unpivot columns. Let's split the column by number of characters. That's three for the month and once as far left as possible. We'll trim the space that's at the front there. And then we need to pivot the attribute. Where are the values in the column called values? And we'll leave the advanced options is aggregating at sum and that's fine. We'll rename this and we're good to go. So we'll just close and load two. Let's pop it below this table so you can see them together and we'll click OK. And there's our data all corrected in a tabular format ready to use. So we've covered three of the main types of pivoted data that we need Power Query to unpivot for us. Let's look at the next type. And you'll notice over here, I've got my queries. I can go back into them and edit them at any time. So in this example, I've got a load of data that's repeating or stacked if you like. So I've got entitlements, name, date of birth, hourly rate, holiday leave hours and holiday leave accrual. Then I've got a blank row and a total and then a blank row and then the next set of data. And that repeats exactly the same pattern all the way down. And it's no good to us in this format. We can't use formulas easily with this type of data. So first thing I'm going to do is format it in an Excel table because that makes it easy for Power Query to consume it. So control T. It has headers, they're in one row and they're fine. We'll use those. Let's go up to the data tab from table. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of the blank rows and the totals. Remember, our source data shouldn't have totals in it. That's what we use Excel to figure out. So we'll get rid of the nulls and we'll get rid of the totals and click OK. So now our data is all repeating 
that's fine. The next thing we need to do is pivot the data. The problem that we're going to have though is some of the values repeat or they're not all unique. For example, some people are on the same hourly rate and they're probably some people with the same date of birth. So we need to add a column that contains a new unique value and we can do that on the add column tab and we'll just add an index column. We can choose from to add an index from 0, 1 or even a custom number. I don't really care for this purpose, it just needs a unique number. So now that we have our index, we can pivot the entitlements column, transform tab and then pivot column. It's going to ask me where my values are. They're in the column called value. And then in the advanced options here, I don't want to count them. I want them to remain as they are. So I need don't aggregate and I'll click OK. So now I have my name, date of birth, hourly rate, holiday leave hours and accrual all in their own columns. I have a bit of a problem though because the data is sort of stepping down onto the rows below. So each person has the data scattered over five different rows. So what we need to do is use our fill tool to copy the data up. So we need the date of birth for Brenda to copy up or fill up to the row above. We need her hourly rate to fill up so that the row with the name has the data for each person on it. Let's do that with them selected. I can fill up. And now if we look at Brenda, her date of birth, hourly rate, leave hours and holiday leave accrual are all on the row with her name. And likewise with Brian, his date of birth, hourly rate holiday leave hours and accrual. You'll notice Brian's data is encroaching up into Brenda's sort of area, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to get rid of all the null rows so that all we're left with are the rows with the names. And now I don't need my index column, so I'll select it and press the delete key and our data is ready to go. I might format this date of birth field so that it's just a date. I'm pretty sure I don't need the time everyone was born at. And if you look back, I'll just go back to the previous step. Everyone is born at 12 a.m. according to Power Query. It's just the default Power Query assumes the time if there isn't a time in the value. And by changing the type to date, it just removes the time element. Okay, so we're ready to close and load. Let's load it to the same worksheet so we can see it beside. And we'll pop it in there and I'll click OK. Oh, by the way, you can add the data direct to the data model. So that's Power Pivot. And in that case, you'd only create a connection and then you pop it straight in the data model so that your data isn't repeated multiple times in your workbook. So anyway, we'll pop it in the table in a table beside. And we can see all of our data in a nice tabular format ready to work with. And if anything changed in here, or I added more rows to my table, then I would just refresh the query and this would update. And anything I had referencing this data would also pick up those changes. So there are quite a few scenarios on how to get data that's pivoted and unpivot. And they're some of the most common scenarios you're going to come across. So hopefully with these examples, you can tackle almost anything. And don't forget, this is the workbook that you can download. And you can see there is step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots on how to do everything. Same for each example that we just run through. So go ahead and download that workbook and become unpivot masters in Power Query. Okay, thanks for your time.